Complex hands like this or this are pretty hard to get with AI alone. To get them, we will need to follow a process composed by two main steps, and we will need both of them. But let's look at some things first. You might have seen negative embeddings that claim to improve hands, or Loras for some very specific hand gestures, and most of the times they are like Sakura from League of Legends. They try to help, at best. I've tested multiple embeddings and none of them have given me good enough results without cherry picking. You can use them, but they are not magic. While Loras have the problem of just being able to create a very specific pose, and with strong bleedings at that, so they are extremely limited even if the Lora itself is… okay. Then there's the control net option, and this can work in some simple cases like these, where the hand pose is very shape oriented. But we will need to learn how to use it for more complex cases and add a little something to the mix. That said, the first step of the process will be creating. This is where we think about how the hands are going to be posed, either having a full image in mind or just planning a specific hand pose on an existing image. In any case, we will plan our approach to it, usually meaning what control net models we will need, which will depend on the complexity of the hand pose. I divide them in three groups. Silhouette poses, when all the fingers are nicely separated and visible, without overlapping each other, like a waving sign. For this, a prompt and a good reference will do the trick, preferably an edge detection model like Canny, Soft Edge or Liner, even though both open pose and depth can do the trick. 2. Simple gesture poses. These are poses that have some overlapping and maybe even interaction between the fingers or with an object, but each finger is easily identified, like a rock and roll sign, a high field of view image like this one, or someone holding something simple. You will need a good prompt and more than one control net reference, usually a mix of open pose, line art and depth. Line art models being almost necessary and depth making it easier for AI to know which finger is in front of which. Three. Bra poses. Yeah, this will need fixing all the time, because I don't even know what's going on here. And this is where our secret weapon will help later on in the video. As you can see, they are a nightmare for AI to understand, and good luck generating them in text to image without fixing anything. There's no after detailer that's saving that piece of shit. Oh, and by the way, I don't use after detailer for hands. Never got any good results to make it worth the extra time generating. As the first example, let's try to make... Um, this pose. Okay, I tried to sketch it a little better, but as you can see, I can't draw. So this hand is supposed to be holding a ball, and this one is pointing at the target. This will definitely be a challenge. One has overlapping with the rest of the hand, and also in a hard perspective. And the other is not only holding an object, but I'd like it to feel like the hand is applying pressure to it. <sighs> Why do I make stuff so hard on myself? Now, you have a lot of options when it comes to approaches and creating control net references. But if I listed them right now, this video would be looking like a Greek's God family tree. So instead, I'll do some examples and go one by one. For this, I chose my favorite approach to making control net references. 3D posing tools. More specifically, pose my art. This is great for when you're planning the full composition of the image. Since you have full control over the camera angle, field of view, pose, and even the depth map contrast, you can also export the open pose and depth maps for the full image instead of trying to make them match the hand position later on. I usually export both open pose with and without hands, just in case the reference with hands messes up the rest of the body. Also, by activating the preview depth option and playing with this slider, you can adjust the contrast of the depth map in relation to distance to camera. This is very useful to avoid having depth maps where the hand is fully white. You want to have at least some variation on there so that AI knows what fingers are in front of each other. The only control net reference we are missing now is the edge detection one. You'll notice that I haven't exported it from Pose My Art. That's because the lines are always very messy and annoying to deal with. You can either hit export image and try to get some control net preprocessor to do the work correctly, or just draw the outline manually yourself, which is what I'd recommend and what I'm doing right now. Good thing about this method is that you can draw stuff as you imagine it, like the ball being compressed from the strength of the hole. Just remember to export on white over black. With everything done, we'll finally move into stable diffusion, import our control net references and prompt accordingly to what we want. It's important to say that you need to be careful when using multiple control net models. Try to keep them on the low weights, as for now we are not looking for the perfect hands, we are looking for a good base image to work from. Some tips for that are, when using multiple control nets, play with the weights of each model, lowering them a little. For the edge detection model, I used liner found it is the one that works best for me, but you can experiment for yourself. It might be checkpoint dependent. I lower the weight a bit and make it stop affecting the image before the last rendering steps. Edge control net models tend to make the image very flat. For this I used a weight of 0.8 and a 0.9 control net ending step. For depth, this is even more true. I used 0.35 as the control net weight and 0.3 ending step. 
that's because depth works too well for its own good. So it will try to make a character that fits the outline. It also trashes the colors. If you put it too high, your character might end up looking like Pink Guy's cousin. And that's why I end it as soon as possible. If you're using normal map, this is even more true. For open pose, you can leave one and one if you want. I tend to lower the weight a little bit, mainly because I don't mind the pose changing slightly and because I'm combining it with other control net models, which tends to overblow the image. If just one hand is holding something, don't prompt it in. It will most likely not know where to put it in the image and end up messing up. For example, here I prompted holding a red ball to see if there was any lucky generation and it just invented a new prothesis. Taking it out of the prompt, we start to get what we were looking for. I generated with a bunch of different checkpoints and styles. As you can see, hands ain't looking that bad, but they aren't perfect at all. Mainly the hand that's further away. For people with this many fingers, they aren't great at holding balls. It's time to see the second step for good hands. Fixing. This step comes in once the image is already done and you know what you want the hands to look like. For this example, I will choose to go forward with this image right here. I quickly painted some background and now I will fix the hands. I like to fix them before upscaling because that way you can create variations faster. Of course, some hands are easier to fix than others. For example, the foreshortened hand is not bad in terms of shape and it has the right number of fingers. This tells us that the control and models that we are using can be enough in this case. We will just use those and in paint until we get something that looks good. Important to keep in mind that when in painting, we can focus on the hand and don't really need to worry about the rest of the image. This allows us to use higher control and values to ensure that, for example, the canny and depth models are being properly followed. Go as high as your pose needs without going overboard. I would love if we could use only masked for this, since sometimes the image resolution is just not high enough to inpaint an automatically correct hand. But we need to use whole picture because only masked messes up the control net models. Be aware of that when inpainting hands. We are looking for the right anatomy and if possible a somewhat correct lighting. The rest is secondary. As long as the big shapes are right, we can fix the rest. You could even inpaint over an already inpainted result until you get what you wanted. After a few attempts, I got the hand I was looking for. The skin tone doesn't really match the rest of the image though, but we will fix this in Photoshop. I will leave a tutorial in the description on how to match skin tones. You could spend more time re-rolling in the inpaint tab to see if you get lucky with a better hand, but I'd much rather do it manually and get them right. You can also see that I lower the contrast on the outline a little bit, as the AI made one that was harsher than what the image already had. And now onto the actual challenge for this image, the hand squeezing a ball. I already have the control net model and this time I don't have to worry about the prompt ball messing up the full image. I will prompt for the hand squeezing a red ball. After some tries, I noticed that Stable Diffusion refused to put some balls on the situation. I increased the weight of the word and tried again. Even with that, only one generation actually understood what I was going for. So I froze the seed that had the good ball and used the extras option to create variations from there. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get that squeeze that I was looking for, forcing me to do it myself. I went into Photoshop with the control net reference that we used and painted over it, focusing on getting the hand correctly posed and then I used the liquify tool, trying to mimic the shape of a ball being held, strongly. Of course, that wasn't a super great result, so I manually went over it and fixed some of the issues it had left. And ta-da! There we have our clean little hands. Might not be perfect, but they will be if you're willing to spend the time on them. Since I can't draw realistic yet, if I was to redo this with the realistic image, I'd probably take the next approach I'm going to show you. It's a very nice way to fix hands whenever the pose is pretty easy or if you need the hand to be holding something specific, using inpaint sketch. In this case, I wasn't getting any ball at all with the regular inpainting, but here we just have to paint the red ball in, and then with a simple prompt we are way more likely to get a good result. Yes, the squeeze isn't really there, but I drew this in seconds. If you spend a little more time on it, you can get much better results. For the fingers to be okay too, you still need to use some control net. Even though, what's great about inpaint sketch is that sometimes it makes it so you don't need control net at all. For images like these, where the hands are bad but fairly easy to correct. There is no need to create a full open pose or line art reference. In images where we are missing a finger, we just paint a base with a similar color as the skin. Then hit generate using something like 0.6 the noising strength. And this creates the new finger really easily. Of course, it isn't perfect, but a very nice starting point with almost zero effort. You can also use it to erase extra fingers, like here, where we can paint the black background back in. 
or both, like I'm doing for this generation, where I will add the missing finger while erasing this weird strawberry at the same time, painting it out with background colors. No need to be super precise, that's the fun of it. And now it's at least looking like a hand even if the anatomy is not perfect. Given the low effort it requires, it's definitely worth it. I would recommend doing this in the last version of Automatic 11.11 or using the Canva Zoom extension. Those have great in-painting tools that make this process much easier and faster. Unfortunately, Canva Zoom doesn't work for me anymore, so I have to guess the colors by eye. You should be able to use the color picker though. Alright, but what about if I don't already have the control net references for the image and the hand isn't easy enough to fix within Paint Sketch? What do I do then? One option is look online for images of hands that match the one you are trying to fix, and then merge them in Photoshop or whatever software you prefer. From here you can either use image to image to fix anything that feels out of place, or just compose them indirectly in Photoshop if you already find a good image and have the skills to do so. If even with this image to image is messing up the hand, you can do what I did in the very beginning, going over the composited hand and making an edge detection reference manually. Now, in painting over the new image with low denoising strength, something like 0.4, and the control net reference. If you don't mess up the prompt, it should give pretty good results most of the time. The main problem with this method is that looking for an image online that matches what you need can take a lot of time, mainly if you are going for a weird hand pose or it's seen from a very uncommon angle. And that's why I made this little tool. With I made, I mean I screamed at ChatGPT to make it for about one day. This lets you import your image so you can see it over here. Now we adjust the brush size and inpaint an area of our choosing. In this case, I will take out the hand. With that done, activate your webcam. Doing this, you can pose the hand yourself and know if it looks good or not, which is way faster than looking online, or trying to match the pose on your own without actually knowing how it will look like. You can adjust the position of the camera as well as the size, and you can also flip it just in case the pose is really uncomfortable. What I do is find the correct pose first, moving my hands around until I know where and how to pose them. Then set a timer of about 10 seconds and hit the take picture button. The timer will start and freeze the camera when it hits zero. If everything's right, now you have the post hand. If you messed up, just start the camera again. Now we download the image and clean it up in Photoshop. I usually mask out the hand a little bit, maybe even adjust it to fit better, and then make a line art for control net. Export everything to Stable Diffusion, and with this, we should have everything we need. If you want to try hard a bit more, you can import the image into Open Pose, choose the DW Open Pose preprocessor, and after hitting the explosion button to check the preview, edit the pre processed reference using the open pose editor extension. This lets you add the hand joints and even pose them. Having this map, an image to use when in painting, and a good prompt, you should be able to make pretty much any hand you want. The idea is to use original mode with a low denoising strength. How low will depend on the image you made. If it's very close to how you want it to look like, then 0.2 or 0.4 should do it. If it captures just the shape but nothing else, try to go for a higher denoising strength, like 0.5 to 0.75. Combine this with high control at weights. You can go as high as you need as long as it doesn't break the image. If it doesn't work and the hand pose is extremely hard, you might want to stay for some tricks at the end. I used this tool to easily correct some hands, including this one here with the glass of wine. For this I actually posed with both hands at the same time using the timer option and the bar I use for my weights. I will leave this tool for free in the description. I hope it works for everyone but I'm no programmer, so expect some bugs. Obviously you don't need that tool. You can also get some pre-made hands depth maps or line arts from libraries like Dev Library, and just paste them over your image before in painting. Take the background out before exporting though, so ControlNet doesn't get confused. You can also just create an open pose reference from imagination, and I mean, if you know how to draw, you could even draw the line art for the hand yourself, or just draw the hand directly. Now that we're talking about knowing how to draw, that will help a lot for this hidden step of the process, clean up and retouching. Here we just go over the little details of the image that we don't quite like, fixing the lighting, the anatomy, me, the color, whatever it is. Fixing hands manually can be tough, so I will leave some awesome hand drawing tutorials in the description, that way you can start to see when hands don't look great and why. All that's left is for you to actually care about fixing them, which we don't always do. As promised, here are some final tips and tricks. If your character is using gloves or has a different colored skin than you, 
Try to match the tone as best as you can when composing, so AI has an easier time when in painting. That way you can go with a lower denoising strength. You could match the skin tone with the tutorial I talked about earlier, or just by masking over and painting over the hand with the desired color. Sometimes you can have trouble with AI putting a finger over another in the incorrect order, which happened to me while making Kiluha from my dress up darling. In these cases, don't be afraid to create your own death map manually. Just use the base you made for the line art and fill one finger with a darker gray than the other. Even going as far as painting the one that's closest to camera fully white and the other one a dark gray. Import that into Control Net Depth and use it to inpaint. If your image has an extreme perspective that you can't match with your webcam, you can try to fix it with 3D models. For this image I used Maya, but you can also use Pose My Art for this. Give the model a material that's close to the desired skin tone, and here, on settings, you have a field of view option. Try and match that perspective. If you have any questions on this topic, please join the Discord and I'll be happy to respond. The community is full of very knowledgeable people that are willing to help. See you there. And while you go watch this video right here, let me say sorry for not posting in so long. I messed up my leg and it still hurts a little. It is still healing, but it's better now. And I also messed up my hand. Now it's almost fully healed though. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.